we serve a god who is great amen there is no power that can limit the goodness of god and the greatness of god and i will go to the extent to say this even you cannot limit god from being good to you that's how good god is you may think you know do i deserve this you know one of the meaning for grace is unmerited favor that means the things that i don't deserve experiencing it in it experiencing those things in our life that's grace so i want to say this to you you cannot limit god even you cannot limit god from working for you working on your behalf amen so take the limitation mindset out of you and expect good things and great things to happen to you amen turn to the person next to you and tell them i'm expecting good things to happen in my life that doesn't mean god hasn't been good to you all these ways all these days can i tell you something there is more to come what you have seen is just a trailer <laughs> it's just a trailer just a preview of you know the the goodness of god there is more to come do you believe that there is more to come your way you will experience it more health more riches more wealth more goodness more favor more opportunities more open doors more good connections more networks amen more money in the bank <laughs> stronger than the rest of the world that's god's goodness amen so let's continue talking about rest how many of you are resting <laughs> yes i'm not talking about the physical rest right it's about being in that restful place like david says no he shall lead me by uh, the, the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he shall make me lie down in green pastures and lead me to st still waters you know Play, when your mind it's about it's not physically being there it's about mentally emotionally in that state right where you you behave like you are lying down by the still waters when storms raging you uh, you, you behave your behavior is not responding to the storms around you but your behavior is so much corresponding to your emotional state like you you behave like as if you're lying down by those green pastures by the still waters you know on an easy chair stretching your leg and having uh, after having had a nice meal with a cool breeze you behave like that that's called rest <laughs> people might be wondering looking at you what happened to you what's wrong with you no i'm resting bro what is this <laughs> but aren't you supposed to be doing something i know i'm not able to do something about it that's why i'm resting a person of rest is like this you know they have the boldness to let go of things that they are not able to do anything and let god see you're not able to do something about it so why bother there are certain things you can do something about it do it but there are certain things you can do nothing about it don't do that's rest say avan paathu pa in tamil you know ellam avan sel in another word you know he will take care he will work it out rest right okay today i want to talk from one of the favorite passages of rest hebrews chapter 4 if you have your bibles turn with me to hebrews chapter 4 where the author is encouraging the people to do this it sounds more like an oxymoron you know i will read it for you hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience another translation says like this 
let us labor to enter into rest you are in rest why should i labor to rest <laughs> right doesn't that sound very contradicting you are calling me to rest why should i labor to enter into that okay so first let me ex- give the perspective of rest okay uh, uh, just follow me god when he created the heavens and earth seven six days right he created the earth and its fullness and everything every being every living creature the things that fly the things that crawl the things that run you know the green herbs the trees the ocean the fish everything bible says on the seventh day he rested what does it mean i'm giving a perspective for rest okay what does it mean he rested that means there is nothing to be done anymore no i don't have to do anything anymore everything is done so i rested so this is father god who rested now let me come to jesus okay we read in hebrews after having made that one sacrifice he sat down do we read that in hebrews have you read that <laughs> now we are wondering where is it in hebrews <laughs> we can read it in hebrews 10 okay he's saying after having offered that one sacrifice jesus sat down that means there is nothing that needs to be done regarding your salvation that's why you know you don't have to worry about how saved you are can i tell you something you you everyone who believe in the name of jesus you are 100% saved you don't have to worry about whether i'm going to hell or heaven you are your eternity is guaranteed when jesus came into the world john 3:16 says god so loved the world that he gave his son whoever believes in him shall not that means death is cancelled perishing is cancelled what is guaranteed everlasting life is is it, are you guaranteed of your everlasting life so you know those days they used to ask this question tonight if you die where will you spend your eternity so now i'm asking you that question indri iravu ningal mari theergal endral tonight if you die tell me where will you spend your eternity you don't know <laughs> no it is guaranteed if there is a heaven and if jesus came to give you that heaven that eternal life that everlasting life can i tell you something there is nothing that needs to be done for you to go there he's done it that means rest father god rested so is there anything god has to work on your behalf he's done it okay jesus rested now let me come to the holy spirit okay on the day of pentecost we read in the book of acts chapter 2 it reads like this he rested on each and every one and they spoke as he gave them utterance see all this while you know everyone spoke as their feelings gave them utterance as the circumstances gave them utterance in another word you spoke because your feelings said so you spoke because you were reacting to your circumstances you are reacting to your situation you are reacting to the provoking you are reacting to the need around you you get it you are speaking now because the holy spirit has rested on you you won't react to your situation you will respond as the holy spirit gives you an utterance that means holy spirit is resting in you to work so you don't have why i am saying all of this the father god rested jesus rested and holy spirit rested you know why i am saying all of this it is for you to live a classy super duper life father god rested that means you can be guaranteed he's done it all for you jesus rested so you don't have to fear your salvation holy spirit rested on you upon you you know why so you don't have to worry about how we are going to face this life he will strengthen you he will empower you he will give you the confidence he will give you the boldness he will be give, he will activate the divine wisdom inside of you he will give you the right word at the right time he will give what is needed 
that is the kind of life you've been called now let me tell you something when god called the children of israel you know i'm putting rest this rest into perspective for you before we go further okay what is his labor all about is what i want to talk about okay uh, when god called the children of israel because this reference is this hebrews 4 it's talk 3 and 4 talks about the children of israel how they failed to rest and then how we should enter into that rest is what it is talking about okay when god called the children of israel this is what he told them see you were in slavery for all these years i am going to deliver you i'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey did he say that have you read that yes what is a land flowing with milk and honey he said you will live in towns that you didn't plan we are live uh, trying to live in a house that we didn't plan itself is a big deal he saying towns you didn't plan cities that you didn't plan houses that you didn't build and the, and the beautiful thing you can go home and read in hebrew uh, i think it's in deuteronomy moses is telling the children of israel deuteronomy 11 i think okay it is saying houses filled with good things that you didn't plan see having a house itself is a big thing but houses filled with good things that means when you you will step into a house there will be fridge refrigerator washing machine you know a big cupboard for your clothes for your wife's clothes for your children's clothes big kitchen micro oven with convection okay so you can grill i can warm up the uh, food also then you will have a dishwasher and you will also have dryer so in bangalore you don't have to have you know the worry of okay is it going to rain can i go to office and not worry about you know my clothes whether it is dried or not a good car a good vehicle your children will have good bed good cot good mattress good sheet air condition for summer heater for winter if it gets cold this is good things now god told the children of israel this is how you will be and not only that wells that you did not dig olives and vineyards that you did not plant compounded cities he said that means what god is telling the children of israel is buddies i am delivering you to take you there and that is the place that i have promised that is what i am promising in another word you will get to a place where you don't have to do anything but you will experience everything it is not about being lazy it is about experiencing god's goodness by doing nothing that is rest this is rest do you get it it's not about being lazy turn to the person next to you tell them pastor is telling you not to be lazy now tell them god's heart for you is also not to be lazy so because you know why when we talk about rest people think okay these people are encouraging lazy i'll come there i'll 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 explain this to you okay god is telling you not to be lazy okay but another thing is but it is it is what it is he's saying you will have to do nothing to enter i experience my goodness that is rest does it make sense so if anyone is telling you asking you for explanation what is this rest this is what it is you don't have to do anything to experience god's goodness make sense house god's goodness vineyard god's goodness houses filled with good things god's goodness cities that is so fortified god's goodness and that's why coming back to the new covenant lifestyle okay this is what god promised the children of israel okay let me give you a rest in new covenant perspective okay in the light of the new covenant where did the new covenant what is the foundation of the new covenant the foundation of the new covenant is this we start from the finished work what did jesus say it is 
the foundation of the new covenant is finished work if the work is finished is there anything for you to do make sense <laughs> see this is where just like how god told them you know you don't, when you will you will inherit my promise what is the promise all about you don't have to work to build a house you don't have to work to build a city you don't have to work to build a well you don't have to work to build a vineyard you don't have to work to build a new uh, an olive garden for you it is finished go and experience it that's why i am delivering you that's why i'm redeeming you that's why i'm bringing you out of egypt that's why i'm bringing you out of slavery same thing when jesus came he died so you and i can be redeemed from the power of sin death and curse so we can experience the every goodness for which the price has been paid so the foundation of the new covenant is the finished work makes sense so now rest makes sense to you father god rested so you don't have to worry about anything Jesus rested so you don't have to doubt your salvation holy spirit rested on you so you run up to wonder how i'm going to face this life and now the invitation is to live that life of rest for the children of israel the promised land is about resting for the new covenant people he saying start from rest he finished it the finished work makes sense and now let's go back to hebrews chapter 11 now he's saying make every effort to enter into the boss just now you said you don't have to worry about anything what is his effort now is that a valid question it is and kjv says like this every labor labor to enter into rest sir you are saying i'll deliver you from all burdens now what is this labor so that caught my attention i went and did a little research and study on it this word effort means pay due it's not about you know working hard it's not about you know doing something your spiritual discipline is very hard like the rich man who came to jesus and said no i have kept everything because he worked hard he kept all the commandments but still he had that sense of lack within him he had that sense of inadequacy within him he didn't feel satisfied because efforts are not enough human efforts are not enough but here it is talking about efforts what is this effort to enter into that rest that means pay due diligence about the rest which has been granted to you what is diligence all about have you heard that word diligence be diligent in your work in another word for diligence is this effective persistence have you heard that word persistence so now it is english class persistent persist with it is just like a young man you know he gets attracted to this young beautiful girl okay his dreams is all about that young woman you know going at it again and again and again that is what persistence is all about going after your vision going after your goal you know keeping that goal in your mind again and again and again not losing sight of your goal not losing sight of your vision not losing sight of your desires in your mind keeping at it keeping so i mean keeping at it so strong that you never lose interest you are not distracted by anything you are not distracted by any sound you are not distracted by any discouragements you are not distracted by any realities you are going at it again and again and again that is what persistence is all about 
and this thing where the author is writing make every effort it is not talking about physical labor it is talking about an emotional a mental a perseverance where you persevere so let me explain what happened here that the author is writing you know make every effort to enter into the trust and here he is quoting the example of the children of israel so god called the children of israel for like i told you you know all the blessings that is going to happen in the promised land okay now let me listen to this so god moses sent 12 spies to go and see the beautiful land the cities that they did not build the houses that they did not plant you know the vineyard that they did not uh, uh, plant and the olive gardens that they did not plant you know the wells that they did not dig the big cities all of that so the children of israel went 12 spies went to see the beauty of the land to measure and everything when they came back what happened there all this while in their mind they had a beautiful picture but when they came back they saw the enormity of the of god's goodness and then this is what they are saying we are like grasshoppers we cannot win them did they say that have you read that he said it is a good land it is a beautiful land but not for us their mind became so weak their mind became so tired their mind became so confused for me is it for me those goodness for me that riches for me that wealth for me that 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 promises is it for me what happened they gave up in their mind they didn't physically give up they gave up in their mind they didn't hold their mind strong they couldn't hold on because they brought them into the picture they didn't bring god into the picture they said no we cannot win it we cannot do it they gave up they said let's not go and you after that if you read they are saying let's make a team let's make a captain let's go back to egypt god brought them with a the mighty hand where they wanted to go from where they were brought back and what will happen there nice beatings slipper wrappings whippings you cannot sleep on time you cannot eat on time you won't be paid properly you will be demanded at all de- demanded to work at all times your 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 house is not respected your men are not respected your women are not respected your children are not respected and where they wanted to go they wanted to go into slavery again why they gave up in their mind they couldn't hold on to that vision strongly they couldn't hold on to god strongly in their mind so persistence it's not about you know going and you know doing something physically again and again and again it's about sitting in a place okay sitting in a place when things are not going right it's about saying i will still see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living you are expecting a job opportunity it didn't come your way when everybody says your future is gone he say this job is not my future my god is my future somebody will call and say we are cancelling this order we found a better deal we found a better vendor we found a better person we are able to say you can go away but god can bring me 10 more better orders why you are not responding to the situation you are responding to god's goodness persistent in your mind does it make sense being persistent so you are not giving up you are not giving up in your mind so this is what happened to the children of israel they saw the enormity they didn't have god in the picture they had themselves in the picture why did they have themselves in the picture see the thing is sometimes we are so conditioned that way so let me explain the life of the children of israel how did they live they were always demanded from right 
they will have to work when pharaoh says you will have to work they will have to eat only when pharaoh says you will have to eat they didn't have labor laws like we have now they are slaves slaves can't have you know uh, labor a union union to fight for you they cannot have labor laws they cannot have uh, what is this uh, hu- hu- human commission human rights no human rights and all for them look at that once you know when moses goes and tells pharaoh let my children go he said from tomorrow don't give them raw material they will have to give the same product what they were giving with the raw material isn't that gross violation so this is a lifestyle that the children of israel are so used to so when god is telling them you know don't worry that's not what i'm calling for where you will be violated but you know you will have you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to work for anything you don't have to do anything i'm going to have it all prepared for you you know in psalm 23 we read no he will prepare a table for me before my enemies and my cup runneth over that's the life god is calling i am preparing for you so what are they doing they are so conditioned in their mind to live like this only how i will have to work i will have to do if i can't do then no one else can do for me if i can't work for my family who will save my family if if i cannot protect my family who will protect my family if i cannot do hard work to build my business who will build doesn't make sense so when things go horribly wrong we immediately give up where not physically not stop working we are still working but in our mind we are giving up that's it all over over class close i don't think it will work anymore i don't think it's going to grow i don't think it's going to go i don't think i'll be healed i don't think i'll be provided i don't think i will see a breakthrough i don't think i will see the end of it where have you given up you stop being persistent you stop being diligent you stopped holding on to that hope why you saw the realities around you you are so conditioned that way only bad things will happen to you and there were there and you also i knew before itself this is how it's going to be. have ever been there i knew ipdi da nadakku nu enak theriyum stopped being persistent so that's why th- this is what happened to them and let me explain rest also you know i said i'll give you a clarity about rest see when god told them i'm going to give you a, a land where you will live in a house that you did not build you will eat grapes of the garden that you did not plant and you know drink water out of the well that he did not dig he didn't say it is going to come easy he said i will give you but you know what the children of israel had to do accept it in their mind that god is giving it to them they were still anakites they were still giants it was a fortified city they still had to go to war they still had to go around jericho they still had to cross jordan they still had to fight so many armies they still had to do caleb said i will go against this mountain people i will get the mountain pe- i'll get the entire mountain for myself they still had to fight but god said i will give you go do the fight i will give you go apply i will give you go put your papers in saying i need this order for myself i will work so it is not that god is saying you know be lazy it is god is saying go with this mindset i am getting it because god is at work you will get it why because you did hard work no no because god is at work so this effort right this effort is being persistent is what this effort is all about 
being persistent in the mind they didn't let their they allow their mind to be distracted they allow their mind to be disturbed because of which they said we can't do it that's why god said i will give did i ask you to go do it he said you go i will give does it make sense so let's read hebrews chapter 4 let's go there Uh, verse 11 it says let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience whose example of disobedience the children of israel what did they disobey did they do anything wrong i mean disobey means when vincent tells josh don't go there he going and doing the same the things that his father tells him not to do that is disobedience here you know what is this disobedience that god is talking about god told them to believe that he is going to give them they didn't believe that is what he is talking as disobedience so believing is something in action or it is a faculty of the mind it is a mind so they didn't say i mean what they did is no not for us that is disobedience so when you talk about disobedience you no know, it's not about you failing to pray it's not about you failing to do something it's not about you failing to take communion in the morning <laughs> it's not about you failing to read your bible it's not that it's not the disobedience when god tells you you are blessed and you are saying more i am the most cursed person in this world you are disobeying god when god has called you righteous you get up in the morning lord have mercy on me i am a sinner total disobedience <laughs> when god tells you you know ask and it will be given to you you go there and say lord please lord thy say the andore please lord do it for me lord please lord i'm begging of you i'm a, i'm a poor this i'm a poor that 100% disobeying he said ask knock seek he never said beg you get it so this disobedience is not in action this disobedience that that the author is writing about is them failing to believe in another word they saw the enormity they didn't persist with it saying yes i am blessed Yes, I'm righteous. Yes, I'm holy. Yes, I am perfect. Yes, I'm sanctified. Yes, I will receive it. Yes, I will experience it. Yes, I will they, they didn't do that. <laughs> they said not for me. I'm a grasshopper. You know, sometimes we think humbling before God is as Lord, I am a simple worm, Lord. You know, when you pray all these prayers, don't think God is happy because you are humble. You are saying all these words. He is so angry with you. I have made you a royal priesthood. I have made you a chosen generation. I have made you a king and a priest. And how dare you come stand before me and say, "I am a pulu and a vare. I am a worm, Lord." Do you get it? These things don't humble. This is not humbling. You know what is? what is humbling before god what is obeying god okay let me say this way you know what is obeying god yes i'm a righteous yes i'm blessed you may have zero money in your pocket but you saying i am the righteousness of god i am blessed you may have one severe hip pain i am healed i'm in good health i'm healed by his stripe you know what are you doing you are persisting you are making every effort to be in that place of rest rest is experiencing god's goodness now that obedience makes sense so obedience don't think it is an action it is about persisting in what you believe what god says you are it is persisting in who and who says god you are and what God says that you are persisting in that sometimes when you do some 
acts of sin okay let me be a bit blatant here okay we do acts of sin you can name it whatever you know your failures you know your weakness i'm not going to say what your weakness and what your failure is for some it can be anger for some it can be gossip because uh, I, i i i you know gossiping is very nice it feels very good you know talking about someone <laughs> it feels very good oh, you feel so satisfied okay for some, for some it is always being negative that's also a bad action for some uh, can i go more no need <laughs> enough to stop here you know so when you finish that and then suddenly you'll feel guilty have you ever felt that if you don't feel it you've become your your conscious is seen with hot iron you're so used to it you're not feeling guilty anymore <laughs> you've accepted this is who i am this is how i'll be this is my fate <laughs> so sometimes when we live beneath the standard you feel bad have you felt bad yes i will feel bad not once many times many a times even i will say lord i will never do it again <laughs> the same week i do it not once twice more than three times and i'll be like god couldn't you stop me <laughs> couldn't you put a stop couldn't you shut my mouth couldn't you do something why holy spirit you are there to help me why you didn't help me i've been there i've done that so when i'm talking it is practical right so next morning when i sit for worship you know what's the first thought that comes to my mind you know how you we were last night you know what you did yesterday you know how we were talking you know what were you doing you know that time you know what obedience is standing up and saying lord i come boldly to the throne room of grace i am the righteousness of god i am perfected forever i am holy you, you have called me to be faithful you have called me to be holy without spot and without blemish and i am coming boldly to experience your presence my actions will not hinder me from approaching your throne you know what i'm doing it's not arrogance it is total obedience what i'm doing i am persisting there not in my action in my faith in what god says who i am in who god says i am i am persisting in that the world my actions may scream at me my flesh may scream at me my emotions may scream at me my neighbor can scream at me my situations can scream at me at that time i'm standing tall and saying yes i'm going to come to the throne room of grace i am a child of god one day let me share this experience susan and i had a very bad fight as we were fighting we were getting a call somebody's demon possessed come <laughs> so immediately we stopped the fight we packed the kids and then we went <laughs> now on the way <laughs> you know how we would have felt uh, i felt i don't know about susan susan is different <laughs> okay i felt like this. what if this demon exposes me to <laughs> die you just know had this fight now we've come to pray for me <laughs> pray for deliverance here get out <laughs> i had to hold my ground there saying it is normal to fight <laughs> it is okay even if i fight but i am going there as a child of god I have power over every authority every demon I have to stand my ground there where persisting Do, does it make sense does rest make sense now persisting in believing who god says i am obeying god so when you're saying obey god that means this is what it is in your trials in your times in your needs you know instead of saying oh nobody is there to help me you know in my time of need instead of saying i've become poor 
there are times when you know titus and kase have asked me so we've become poor now <laughs> you know children can be so blatant they will make us feel the reality so easy <laughs> so at the time you know it's it's so real at the time persisting obedience now persistence makes sense now you know what it is making effort so it is not the real effort you know it's your mind it's in your mind why you persist in what god has called you for uh, wait let's go to the next verse let me finish okay uh let me explain this uh verse 12 for the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joins marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart so how many of you have read this passage of scripture before and what have you thought didn't you feel that fear and dread the word of god it penetrates through the marrow through the joints you know especially in the olden days you know in my young days கர்த்தருடைய வார்த்தையானது நரம்புகளுக்குள்ளாக எலும்புகளுக்குள்ளாக பகுத்தறியும் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் because we are talking about rest this is talking about rest and it says it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the it doesn't judge your action it judges your thoughts and the attitude so now tell me isn't your thoughts and attitude very important that's why persistence is an attitude of the mind it's a personality you know kfc you know at what age did kfc became famous 64 65 but he kept on trying he didn't give up he, if you read a story it's very is a challenging personality he got divorced he kidnapped his own child then got arrested for that he is a funny guy <laughs> at 65 imagine him giving up when he was 50 you wouldn't be eating kfc now kfc wouldn't be a brand he said okay i passed half the century enough you know let me eat whatever i get he kept going at it again and again and again he never gave up until he became kfc the brand an international brand not just in america it's all over the world right till today nobody knows the secret ingredient nobody knows that's how they have it. they have it going imagine kfc giving up at giving up at 50 okay giving up at 60 giving up at 64 gone so it, it, it what is god judging he is not judging okay pravin came to church today let me give him extra blessing josh came to church after <laughs> josh came to church what the tigle suti suti so let me no not josh josh yeah Josh came to church after so many weeks. Extra blessing this week. Now let's go. No, no, no. The thing is, it's the attitude of the mind, attitude of the heart. So that means God is looking at your heart. God, God looked at the heart of the children of Israel. Why are they thinking like that? I told them I am giving you. Why are they behaving that way? Why are they thinking less of themselves? because they couldn't accept the reality god's reality not human reality 
they couldn't accept god's reality they couldn't enter the promised land but let's read further make sense so obedience is not in action it is the attitude of your mind now look at this nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight everything is uncovered and laid before the eyes of him to whom we must give account and it goes on to say therefore since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven jesus the son of god let us hold firmly to the faith we let us hold rest let us hold firmly to the faith we profess this is persistence let us hold firmly this is the effort we put to enter into rest hold firmly you now there are times people will question you are you a christian especially in school days no when we do naughty things the first thing you are a christian no and we had extra attention because we are pastors children christian pastor pulla don't let all these questions you know change your <laughs> what you're holding on to hold firmly keep holding hold firmly means what what is holding firmly no matter what happens i will not give up on what i believe devil can come and shout at me you are good for nothing he won't come sh- shout at you directly he'll shout at you through through so many things in this world hold from me i'm a child of god i'm blessed goodness of god get it hold firmly and uh, look at this for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not he did not jesus did not sin huh Do you think Jesus had problem with sin? Do you think Jesus had problem with lust? Do you think Jesus had problem with gossiping? Do you think Jesus had problem with anger? Do you think Jesus had problem with robbing, stealing, lusting, envying? No, 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 no. The thing is he had problem just like us, but he did not sin. That means If you look at Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 it says they had a sinful unbelieving heart can i read that for you to show you want reference okay come Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 now turn your bible and read it because you asked for it no? so turn your bible if you don't have bible uh turn your phones you all have for bibles on your phone so read it 3 verse 12 can we all read it see to it brothers and sisters that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the so when jesus did not sin what does it mean the thing is he no matter what people said he didn't give up on who god thinks that he is people told him look at him casting out demon with the power of the demon he didn't care people told him are you the son of mary man you're supposed to address with your father's name what they were saying you are a illegitimate child he didn't care to prove who he is people were questioning him so many things if you are a child if you are a son of god turn these stones into bread he said i don't have to prove myself he didn't do that because he held on to who the father god thought that he is right so when jesus when he talks about jesus he did not sin you know what it is talking about it's talking about jesus holding on to jesus persisted 
Jesus going strong. So when Jesus did not sing, don't think he struggled with, you know, issues in life. He didn't have life issues. The devil was trying to distract his mind from keeping at it. That's why in Hebrews we read like this. Look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him ran the race. You see that? Have you read that? That's how it is. So let's read now. And what does it say? But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of what need we have. This need is not a power, not that need. A power, what are we saying? God help. No, 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 not that. The need that I'm talking here is the ability to persist so I can rest for God to do the best. Today, you know, what I pray that the Holy Spirit will do for you is this. Give you the strength to persist. How many of you believe you have a great future? How many of you believe that you will see and experience the goodness of the Lord? Yes. But you know, we cannot be at it. There, they didn't have Jesus. In the wilderness, they didn't have the high priest Jesus. They didn't have the blood of Jesus speaking for them. But today, we have Jesus as the high priest. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. Today, you know, when you fail, when you're not able to believe, He will help you to believe. When you're not, when you're not able to hold on to, He will help you to hold on to. When you're not able to keep going, He will help you to keep going. So you will not perish. Those people perished in the wilderness for 40 years. You know why they went around for 40 years? God wiped away an entire unbelieving generation. Now God is not interested in wiping you away. God is excited to help you so you will, you, you will experience the promises of God. I want you to know, you all have a great future. You will see the goodness of the Lord. But you know what? Persisting. Persisting. Persisting means Keeping at it. Keep going at it. Don't let anything distract you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on those desires. Like this morning I was telling Kati. Kati, we will get a place. We will get a huge place. We will have a big crowd coming. That time, you know, we won't be having small monitor. We will have big LED walls. And that time we will have a separate room for presentation. Pro presenter. We are talking about logic, we are talking about pro presenter. For lighting, we'll have a separate room, for sound, def, separate room. These are my desires. I see what 20 people now. If I give up now, this is how I'm going to be. I'll tell you something. Before, before the new covenant, that's how I will be. Now, I have Jesus, a high priest. He said, He'll talk to the Father. This poor boy is not able to believe. Let's help him. Then Holy Spirit encourages me. He empowers me. You know, when I'm standing here, I'm preaching this sermon because I experience that empowerment. I'm not tired. Just because I see so very little people, I'm not tired. I'm not giving up. I will see a move of God. I will see people coming in to receive to experience God in this place. The same goes for you. Just because you are where you are now, where you don't see anything happening, don't give up. Persist. That is the rest. Persist in your mind. Amen.